We are back, and it is time for game two between MVP's Dong Regu and my insanity Stardust. The map is going to be Habitation Station, and I love the juicy builds on this map. Yeah, the gold bases. I'm so glad the gold bases were brought, were brought back. I think they add so much to yeah. the game. Uh, it's a different mechanic. It, it makes it so that it forces attackers. It forces, you know, it, it forces so much stuff. You can, you can mine so much faster. It creates crazy gameplay. And yeah, you can take a huge risk, and if it doesn't go so well, I'll just take a gold base. <laughs> no big deal. Yeah. They gave Dark Templars to, to every race, basically. <laughs> Up in the top left-hand corner. Currently leading the series 1-0 and o from MVP. It is Dong Regu. And on the right-hand side as the Red Protoss from My Insanity, it is Stardust. Opting for the, I think, always excellent pylon first at expansion on this map. I mean, the choke is so tiny. There's no good Zerg threat. Even Baneling busts go very poorly on this map. What do you think are the, the cute moves we're going to see out of Dongregu in response to the fact that the natural is just so, so easy to defend? Uh, we'll see if he decides to, to, to expand to the gold, actually. If, if, is he going for a drone scout, or is he just going to look for proxies here? Oh, I'm not quite on. sure. It looks like maybe a drone scout. Oh, come on. Build, build the gold. Th wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that just fix everything for everyone? Very fast forge from Stardust with yeah, uh, so as well probe scout. Yeah, he's also anticipating a hatch first potentially from Dong Ragu. Um, at the same time, even though the choke is very small in this map, it is the shortest rush distance from main to main out of any map in the map pool, I believe. So you have to be still account as a Protoss player for early pulls once in a while. Yeah, I mean, that, that is absolutely true. I mean, it's like 30 seconds for Marine to go from natural to natural. So unless you already have the defenses set up, you can't stay alive. So that's why we tend to see those attacking plays happen so frequently. First hatch going down. Everything seems very normal. But does, does, when does a Zerg not want to take the north goal versus taking the left base? When do they not want to take the gold? Yeah, why, why would I take you know, the left base from a Zerg player versus Stardust here? Um, I don't know. Most Zerg players will take this base. It's, it's a little bit easier to defend. It's a little bit more standard. The gold will kind of mess up with your build a little bit if you're not used to it as well. Uh, you, you have to transfer those drones. So even though you get more economy, you get it later on. Um, a lot of players yeah. are, are much more uh, mechanically oriented or are confident in their ability to um, you know, just get ahead like they normally would on any map, as the gold's not really accessible for Protoss up until later on. Well, at this point in time, we're seeing the double gas go down, we're seeing the forge go down, nothing too notable occurring. Um, I, I really would like to see Stardust do some of his trademark aggression on this map. Yeah, that would be really nice. Don't worry, we're going for a very quick third this time around, so that would actually work out pretty well, but at the same time, off of a Nexus first, a little bit less likely. <laughs> I mean, perhaps we could see a third base come up quickly, but uh, you know, the only person I've really seen pull that off with supreme style is SOS, who takes the fast gold and goes Mass Tempest. That was a glorious match to see. With the okay. third base going down for Dong Regu, we don't see any geysers yet, and the geysers are always the big key to what the Protoss, or excuse me, what Zerg has in store. I mean, 5.30 versus 6 versus 6.30 lead to very, very different timings. And the one that I'm most excited to see is 5.30 double gas. This is a build that lets you get the Hydralis really quickly. And I mean, the Hydralis have been so good in the matchup lately. Yeah, absolutely. But again, I, I talked to Dong Regu and he, he said he doesn't like him. You know, he made him last game. Ah, oh, come on, Dong Regu. <laughs> come so on, man, good. just make him. Right, they I are. mean, that improved attack speed. Yeah, they're, they're, really, they're really juicy right now, Hydras are. And uh, Stardust moving out with a probe as well, which has to uh, put a little bit of, uh, of a worry in the, in the mind of Don Rogu. Well, this thus far looks very similar to his... That was really cute. He just pulls back the probe. He showed the probe with the solid, and then he just pulls it back. Oh, and is that going to go expand? Oh, I love it. Say so make, make, oh, make units. Yes, please, please do the probe. classic third nexus. Is he going to toss it down? I mean, this is pretty bold. Oh, the Scantipede has to get out of the way. He has the Who? money for it. 
who gets blocked by the Scantipede? Oh, that's so unfair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what is he going to do from here, Sean, you think? Well, I mean, what I'd like to see him do is do the like, mass, mass, mass gateway pressure that he's so famous for. Like you said, it's, you know, extremely close distances from natural to natural. That's not going to change at any point in this game. The players are only going to get closer over time, and I think that's going to be quite strong. The concern I would have on Dong Rei Gu's side of things is that he needs gas to begin applying any pressure. So, yeah, I think Stardust that's is like free from pressure. Yeah, that's what that's, that's what's making Stardust uh, comfortable right now. And look look at him. I mean, he's going for a robo. Whoa, he's going nice. for double gases. All of this off of one gateway while upgrading with a forge. Not even chrono boosting the cybernetic score. He's playing this so risky, but at the same time he's playing it because he knows that Don Regu's gases are so delayed. He knows that he has the time to do whatever he wants. I mean, the real question in my eyes is what does Stardust do with his next set of money? Look at that, he's going for the Twilight Council and the Robo Facility. I think we're going to be seeing a very passive game. I mean, he's, he's on one gateway, eight minutes in, now adding extra two. But that's, that's quite insane and, and really impressive. It's not like he's doing this blind. And then we see Zergling upgrades come out of Dong Regu. I know a lot of players in this spot would be like, ooh, I want to get ready to go Swarm Host and stuff. But what do you make of the Ling upgrades? Uh, I think he's just going to go Ling into Muta. He's making a Roach Warren mostly defensively, I'm, um, I'm guessing. I would guess he would take a fourth sometime soon. But uh, yeah, it's probably that. I mean, he could go into Ultras, but it is, a, it is a, an extremely choky map. One of the chokiest maps out there, and Ultralisks yeah. are not fantastic in those situations. Plus two armor en route, Immortal en route, and with five gateways, Blink, and these upgrades, a lot of big threats that can come out from Stardust, and he's just going to use these free uh, gateways to warp in units. Oh! <laughs> Amazing force shields. Amazing. Like, th those were actually... And how many links are there? Yeah, I mean, from the high ground, too, and the units lost. It looks like that was up, what, up 20, 24 lanes or so. Yeah, that was insane. Uh, Dongregu, surprisingly, still on three base. His lair's almost done. Now making roaches. He, now he's taking a fourth. Okay. Yeah, I would like to see a little bit more aggressive expanding from Dongregu, a little bit more boldness, because you can take that risk, take the gold. You see your opponent on one gate expanding. There's no way he can apply pressure. And Dongregu, I think, is... Quite surprised to see that it's it's a pretty difficult to pierce Protoss base. Yeah, I'm really worried for him at this point. I mean, he just started Roach Speed. Now he drops the Hydra then, which is great. He, did he see the Immortals? He must have. Um, that's going to be the response he needs against the Immortals, that or Swarm Hosts. There's no time to drop a Spire right now. He knows that there's an attack that will be coming. And if that attack shows up before he could get Mutas out, he's basically dead. Yeah. So, I mean, this is it. The clock is on Dong Regu. He needs to get an answer or deal damage with a counterattack or wow. delay for another minute or two. This Dark Shrine is it's, it's so good. It's the last thing that I would account for, that I would ex yeah. expect this Dong Regu here. It's even, so random. Yeah, I'm even looking at it, and I'm like surprised that it's there. Yeah, it's, it's pretty random. Dong Regu is still trying to keep Stardust on his side of the map, trying to get for... Uh, a, a, a unit composition that can deal a little bit better with this. Uh, with two Immortals out and gonna go for the War Prism Harass. But Stardust needs Ooh. to apply pressure soon. I think he's just waiting for that Dark Shrine. Yeah, I like the idea of waiting for the Dark Shrine because then he has a, a, a big multi-pronged attack. The huge one at the front and then this drop in the back and DTs somewhere else. All but, the while getting yeah. up the, the Colossus. Yeah, I think the DTs will definitely be on the main on this War Prism here. That will be tough to deal with uh, for Dong Regu. Does he have any static defense set up at the main? Ooh, it looks, looks like, like not. no. I mean, it's pretty uncommon to see a player get so many gateways on three base and look then not attack the you immediately. He's going to warp in DTs as soon as he can. This is great. So, oh dark, my gosh, dark Stardust. Just finished. Hasn't done anything yet. Is just trying to take out this queen and manages to get it down. Will he begin the warp in? I mean, he should. He sees no static defense. There's no reason to not work in DTs. Well, it looks like he's trying to draw as many forces as possible. Dominic, already had an Overseer in that force. Stardust now moving down to the bottom left side with the number. Oh, uh oh, Roach counterattack yeah. at the third. But there's a Dark Shrine, so those are getting, yeah, the, the warps in four DTs. Pulls back his army, I'm not sure about that. Uh, leaves a few Stalkers, though, that's really nice. The Warp Prism still somewhere in the main, but not really doing anything right now. This is a nice counterattack by Dominic. Dominic is target firing. 
And it looks like the uh, Nexus is probably going to fall. Uh, maybe there's a possible save because the force fields, but no. Dong Ray Du manages to take out another base, and Stardust is on the back foot. Yeah, this is really tough for Stardust because he wasn't doing anything during that other than moving his army back in terms of trying to hurt Don Ragu back. Now he's warping in DTs, but Don Ragu has all the attention he needs right now. He's not looking at his army. There's nothing else going on. That was very nearly a great attack from Stardust, but yeah. I mean, Don Ragu is just doing his usual style, nothing too tricky. He's relying on counterattacks. He's relying on roaches to, to buy himself time. He's using hydras when he needs to, and now he's getting the vipers to reinforce it. I think that... Dong Ray Gu's doing the, the, the no surprises Zerg style that's that's continuing to get him ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, that, that was a, a difficult decision for Stardust to make, right? Going back there with his entire army. Because if he doesn't, he takes one base, maybe two. If he commits to, to, to the War Prism in the main, he could have taken the main as well with Dark Templars. While defending with less, just the Dark Templars, there was no Overseer. So Lucy, maybe sacrificing his third, which he lost anyway, would have been the right yeah. call. Uh, so... That, that was a tough decision to, to make, but he's not out of it by any means. Yeah. Right now he's getting uh, his Colossus, but Colossus range is a little ways behind, so that will definitely put a damper on the aggression. We're seeing continued attempts from Stardust to do these very long counterattacks with Zealots on the bottom sides, getting Templar Archives, getting more cannons. I think that Stardust is getting increasingly worried about a transition to Mutas. Yeah, absolutely, and he should. Uh, the, those Zealots actually running under the Overlord. But, uh, yeah, they will get spotted and taken down, unfortunately, for him. Well, it's a good opportunity to at least keep tabs on the Zerg upgrades. Don Ragu being very responsible about getting his plus three carapace. I mean, while all this is going on, the Hive is already done. The Vipers are already done. And I actually think Dong Ragu might even win with this attack. Yeah, it's quite possible. There's still one Immortal trying to do what it can. Don Ragu realizing that that could be potential DTs and instantly morphing Overseers. Well, it looks like the Immortal will maybe get a kill on the Queen. Does take it out. Still pulling back. That Immortal has been a hero. It's like the only big damage dealer that Stardust has had. Stardust is moving out into the middle, and I think Don Ragu wants to engage. He's trying to bait out the, oh. yeah, the abducts, <laughs> and he does. A very clever move from Stardust, managing to keep all of his real Colossus alive. Yeah, that was really smart. Don Ragu knows there's Colossus out, so why would you ever move without them? Well, for you to abduct them. That was, that was so really smart. good. I haven't seen that before, actually. And now that taking the fourth base very confidently, and all of a sudden the, there's going to be a lot of Colossus with no real way to deal with it for Dong Ray Gu, and yeah. there's there's no Vipers in sight. This is a massacre. Yeah, only two abducts available, so even... Oh, and the oh, feedback, oh, so oh, no oh. abducts available, and suddenly the game has switched around. What a defense by Stardust. Oh, my God. That, you know, I feel like it's that scene in the movie where you hear just, like, a single bolt drop. And yeah. then the whole building starts to come down. Those two hallucinated Colossus getting abducted by the Vipers, and suddenly Stardust has the opportunity to storm forward. Zergling counterattack from Stardust, in, or uh, from Don Ragu in the natural Stardust, but Stardust is just drilling into the expansion. Yeah, Don Ragu with the Panic Swarm hosts. That's uh, basically the Cirque DT, so it's like going behind. But uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. There's a lot of Colossus here. Five Colossus should have no problem. Uh, pushing through this waves of locusts. Wow, that was a very rapid turnaround. It's only roaches in production, but no vipers, no good support units, only eight swarm hosts, no vision yet. There's a single observer that's trying to make its way across the map, but there are only The Colossus are unprotected, though, and one's going to fall. A second one's getting focused down. He has to be more careful with this. He needs his army with this. And now a third... Oh, a second falls down. The, the, locu the, the locusts need to get taken care of. The swarm host do. There's no observer. There it is. There's the observer and immediately everything just gets ripped to shreds and GG. What a turnaround. That was a very, very impressive display of tactics by Stardust. Hallucinating the Colossus and marching them forward and then they got yoinked. And then suddenly Dong Ragu was like, wait, 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 wait. That's not... I I'm supposed to either avoid Templar or get your Colossus. One of those two has to happen. Yeah, that was that was incredible play by Stardust. That was so clever to just hallucinate two of the Colossus and try to pretend like he was clearing creep. Um, Don Ragu could have noticed that the Colossus were doing no splash damage, yeah. but in the heat of the moment, it's so hard to do. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, that means we're tied 1-1. The next map is going to be Frost, and when we come back, one of the larger maps in the map pool will conclude the series. Stay tuned.